Hi everyone, so some people have been asking me to explain cameras and camera movements in Cinema 4D, so I thought I would talk about that today. But of course, I don't want to just talk about the camera itself, so first I'm just going to show you how to do this kind of trendy mountain kind of scene with cubes and other shapes, or you could even have like just a cutout of your person, whatever. So let's just get started with it. So first you want to just hold this cube and click landscape. Here at the size, you want to just increase this middle number that's going to increase the height of your mountain. So a lot of this is you're just going to have to keep playing with the numbers. I'm just going to put 700 and as you can see, it became super tall now. And then these two other numbers changes the width and the other width of the mountain range. You'll see. So to change the shape of your mountain, you can increase or decrease the rough furrow. So for example, if I bring this up to 75, you can see it has more kind of uh, dips into it. And if you don't want to just keep playing with the numbers, you can easily increase the seed and that'll completely change the shape of your mountain. So you can just keep scrolling until you're happy with the shape of it. Then you can also increase the scale, and if I just change this to even just 3, you can see there's a lot more ridges. You can also uncheck the borders at sea level, and this will give you a completely different shape of mountains. If you want to bring your mountain down a little, you can increase the sea level, so let's say 20%, and as you can see, it kind of dips a little lower. So this is the mountain that I ended up with. If you want the exact mountain I have, then just copy my settings here. Now to add the material to this, of course, just create a new material and uncheck the reflectance. Now you can add any picture that you want to this. You can add gradients, you can add backgrounds, you can even add a grid background. That's what I'm going to do first. So just drag the material onto the mountains and change the projection to cubic. If you want to have realistic mountains, like have snow and rocks and stuff like that, then keep watching, otherwise skip to this timestamp. So to create a realistic mountain material, of course, just create a new material and uncheck the reflectance. A lot of what I'm about to show you is probably not going to make much sense, but that's okay. Just follow all of the steps and you'll get your pretty mountains. So here where it says texture, click down this arrow and select layer, then double click that and click on shader and select noise and do that two more times. So first we're just going to hide these first two shaders. Then select this little picture next to noise, change the first color to gray, and change the second color to a darker gray. Then here where it says noise, change that to poxo, and change the relative scale to 50, 500, and just keep this last one. Now click this little arrow to go back, and now we can unhide the second layer. Select the picture next to it, and just change the noise to Luca. Change the relative scale to 2000, 75, and 2000. Then go back and then hide the third layer and select that picture. Change the noise to Stoopy. And change the global scale to 600. For the relative scale, keep the first one and change the second one to 700 and the third one to 80. Now click the back button twice to go back to where we started. And here where it says texture, select fusion. And just click that click on use mask and then select the arrow for blend channel and select noise then select that change the first color to a super light gray like right about here and change the second one to another super light gray just about here and increase the global scale to 800 now go back and you want to select where it says layer for base channel for the first layer you want to change that to overlay and change the second one to burn then go back and for the mask channel, click the arrow, select effects and select terrain mask and close out of this and just drag it onto your mountain. And if you click the render view, you can see all of the snow and stuff. If you still want to use a background for your mountains, but also add snow to it, then just double click the material. Then here where it says texture, select the arrow, then go down to layer, then select where it says layer and click on shader, effects and terrain mask and click on normal and select lighten it looks super weird for now but if you click the render view you can see all of the snow in your mountains so since the material is making the shape look super confusing for now i'm just going to select it up here where my object is and select delete or backspace on your keyboard and we can just add it back later when we're done with everything 
Now to actually get going with our transition and add the cubes, I'm just going to increase the view here. And I'm just going to select the cube and decrease the size and move it up so I can see it. And first I'm just going to add my picture to that. And I'm just going to move around my mountain to find a nice spot for my cube. And I'm just going to repeat that process and create two more cubes. Now that I've got my cube in place, we can actually work on the camera movement. So first of all, before we start adding any keyframes, make sure that your clip length is correct. Now we can add a camera. And what I've done to make it so much easier to move the camera is I configured the panel. So click this little square here. And on this top right one, select options, configure, then change the view to perspective and select display and select the first one. Then go to panel and select arrangement, then either two views stacked or two views side by side. Then on our top panel, we can select camera. That way on this bottom panel, we can change the camera movement. While on the top panel, we can see what it's actually looking at. So first what I like to do with my cameras is just zero out all of the coordinates. As well as the rotations. So for me, first thing that I have to do is point my camera in the right direction because right now it's pointing somewhere here and obviously all of my cubes are over here. So I'm just gonna rotate this. And now that it's pointing in the direction of my cubes, I am just gonna move it back so that we can actually see the cubes. And up here we can see that it's a bit low, so I'm just gonna move it up. And now we're at a pretty good place to start keyframing. So first I'm just going to select the blue arrow to move my camera forward and I'm just going to point it towards this top cube right here. And of course I have to change the rotation a little bit and just move my camera so that it's centered up here. Once you've adjusted your camera and you're pretty happy with where it is right now, select this little key at the bottom. And that'll create a keyframe for everything that you have so far. So the position that it's in and the rotation that it's in. That way you don't have to separately click each and every one of these little keyframe buttons. So here in After Effects, let's just pretend I have an actual edit and not just black and white layers. And let's just say I want my little clip to start from this beat here and last until this beat over here. If you don't know how to get the proper number of frames for your clip length, then watch my beginner's video. But if you do know how to do that, then this next step is going to be a pretty similar process. So to figure out where my first beat goes, I'm just gonna, of course, go to my first beat on After Effects. And here the number is 60, so I'm gonna just type that into my calculator. Then I'm gonna just go back to the previous beat. And here the number is 45. So subtract 45 from my number, so 60 minus 45 and I get 15. So now I'm gonna go back to cinema and I'm gonna go to 15 frames and I know that that's where my first beat is gonna go. Now to create a marker here, kind of like what After Effects has, go to the F curve timeline and select this little button and that'll create a marker. And now if I move away, you can see there's a little line at 15 and that's how you know that your first beat is there. So for the second beat, my number is 75. So put that into your calculator, minus this number, 60. And I get 15 again, so now what I'm going to do is on cinema is go 15 frames after 15. So 15 plus 15, that's going to be 30. And I'm just going to add another marker there. So just repeat that process until you've marked out all of the beats in your clip. So now that we know where our beats are, we can continue adding keyframes. So I'm going to go to my second beat. You can go to your first beat, but I don't want mine to go too fast. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the rotation of my camera just so it's in the general direction of this second cube here and move it down. And again, just aim it so that this cube is more in the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring it up and I'm going to have it rotate so it's kind of pointing downwards rather than just straight ahead at the cube. And I'm going to bring it back a little bit 
And again, once you're happy with where the camera is positioned and pointed, then select this little key and that'll automatically keyframe everything. Now I'm going to go to my fourth bead here. Of course, you want your keyframes to be equally spaced just as you would regularly keyframe an After Effects edit. And again, I'm just going to move the camera and rotate it so it's pointing at this final cube. and just keyframe those. So my next keyframe is going to be the end of my clip, but you wanna go one frame before your clip ends. So my clip ends at 89, so I'm gonna make a keyframe at 88. And just create my last keyframe here. When you're done keyframing your camera, you can close this bottom panel by selecting the square on the top panel. If you want to make any more adjustments, you can always select the square again and it'll come back to this. So this is what mine looks like so far. And it is pretty smooth, but you know, as with most other transitions, you want to add graphs to this thing. So go to the window and select Timeline of Curve. And this looks very confusing because it has all of your position keyframes and your rotation keyframes. It has the graphs for all of those, so it does look overwhelming. <laughs> but just select the plus next to the camera. And you can just select one value at a time and work on the graph for that. Now, as you can see, when I select the position X, it's way down there and I can't really see it. So click this black little graph here and you should be able to see everything now. For this transition, I'm just going to add a regular in and out graph. So to change my graph, I'm just going to select the little white line thing here and just drag it a bit. Then select this keyframe and don't just drag it because as you can see, it's changing both sides of it. So what you want to do is select shift and hold that down as you drag it. That way you can only drag one at a time. And after you do it once, you don't have to do it again, so you don't have to keep holding shift as you drag it. And to get a closer look at this graph, I'm just going to select the keyframes and select this little white graph here. And that'll zoom into my graph here so I can adjust it a little better. And what I usually like to do is just pull the little white things as far as I can. And that's usually a pretty smooth graph for me. Then to zoom out of the graph, just click this black symbol again. Now I'm going to highlight the next two keyframes and zoom into those. And again, I just like pulling this little white thing as far as I can. For the next keyframe, you are going to have to hold shift to break the graph. Now you can just repeat this process for all of your other keyframes. So this is what mine looks like after adding in graphs. Now when you start doing more complicated things in cinema, when you start adding more objects and stuff, it's going to get pretty laggy. So to give an example, here's what happens when I preview one of my edits. Super laggy, not at all how it turned out in the edit. So to get an accurate timing of your edit, first you want to click Command S or Control S on your keyboard to save everything that you have on Cinema. And just import your Cinema 4D file onto After Effects. And go to where you want your clip to start and click the square bracket on your keyboard and that'll automatically move it. Go to preview and select cache before playback and just let it play. At first it's going to be laggy because it's rendering everything. But once the green line reaches the end of your clip, it'll play normally. And now you can get an accurate preview of the timing of your edit. Don't worry so much about how everything looks, the background and stuff like that. All we care about is the timing. So now that our keyframes are done, of course we need to add a light. So just go to general. And to move my light, I'm just going to go back to the two panels and just move it like we did with the camera. And for the shadow, I'm going to select Ray Traced and edit the shadow and I'm just going to decrease the density to about 80. And now I'm just going to add the material back onto my mountain now that I've got the cubes and everything in place. To add a background, I'm going to add a physical sky. So hold down this little grid and select physical sky. And you can just leave it like this. If you have the time and patience and you're bored, you can play around with the settings here. I usually like to add on clouds and also sunbeams. 
and for the time and location if you have the time if you're bored then select custom down here and you can literally go to any city in the world and it'll have a different setting for them some of them are more pink some of them are more blue or orange but yeah again you can go through some of those if you're really bored so this is what my scene looks like and right now there's like just a weird empty background here so what i like to do is just go to sky and scroll down and here where it says horizon star just decrease that by about up to like negative 10 so you can try negative 6 for a start and as you can see the clouds are coming down and now if we render this the background looks a lot better so once you're happy with your clip and you're ready to render it of course check the render settings and make sure that the width and the height are the same as your composition on after effects make sure the frame range says all frames go to save and change the format to mp4 and just enter a file name and select the three dots and that'll let you select a folder to save it in then you can close this and click the render to picture viewer and just let it render so once your clip is done rendering you can just drag the mp4 file into after effects and since we couldn't choose cinema 4d for the motion blur just add it using rsmb